Now we are officially one month away from making history. More than 31 million people across 15 states, including right here in Toledo, Ohio. We're going to see the moon completely cover the sun in a total solar eclipse, briefly turning day into night. And this afternoon we have with us NASA expert Anita Day with us to talk more about it. Anita, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Of course. So I'll get it right to the question so I know you're a busy woman. Now, one month from today, people across North America are going to see a total solar eclipse. Can you describe what exactly is going to happen during this phantasmal celestial event? During a total solar eclipse, the moon moves in front of the sun and blocks uh, the sun for us. So it casts a shadow on the Earth. That means that there is a path of totality. That means the part of um, the part of the country where the, the sun will be completely blocked by the moon. And then the rest of the country will have a partial eclipse of varying degrees because of the shadow of the moon. That is so cool. Now, we've been told to never look directly at the sun, but the argument, well, how can I see it? Well, so basically, what's the safe way for us to view the eclipse? with solar viewing glasses or eclipse glasses. That is a great way to look at the eclipse. Uh, you will be incredibly lucky to be in the path of totality. When the moon is completely blocking the sun, it is safe to take off your glasses. That is the only time it's safe to take off your glasses to look directly at the sun. But as soon as the moon starts moving away from the sun, as soon as you can see any light, put those glasses back on because the sun in any percentage is too strong for us to look at. If you don't have glasses, that's okay. You can get a colander, you probably have one in your kitchen, to, uh, to project images of the eclipse on the sidewalk. You can do the same thing with your fingers. Um, or, you know, I was lucky in 2017 that I was in the courtyard of my office and I got to see the eclipse uh, filtering through the leaves scattered on the ground. It was beautiful. That does sound very cool. Now, of course, people across the U.S. were treated to a solar eclipse, like we mentioned, in 2017. So how is April solar eclipse actually different than the one that we're talking about now? The path of this eclipse is different. We're going from Texas to Maine. Uh, that path went west. There are more people in the path of this eclipse, 31 million people, probably more for the people who are traveling to get there. And uh, the path of this eclipse is wider, putting even more people in the path. And finally, the sun is reaching something we call solar maximum. The sun goes through roughly an 11 year cycle. Uh, at its minimum, it's quiet. At its maximum, like right now, it's very active. So for those in totality, like you, you will um, see when the sun is completely covered by the moon, the sun's corona, that's its outer atmosphere. We can't see that at any other point. So it'll be more tangled because of the solar maximum. It'll look a little bit more like Albert Einstein's hair. <laughs> I love that. Now, of course, what are some other ways that viewers can get involved uh, with the solar science during this total solar eclipse? This is a great opportunity to join NASA in doing science. We have many projects that welcome public participation and your data helps scientists make uh, discoveries and determinations. So for the eclipse, there are several projects, but I'll just talk about two. There is the Globe Observer. It is a year round project looking at the environment, but they've added a special eclipse mode and that allows you to look at the um, record data about the clouds and the temperature where you are. And then there's another one called Eclipse Soundscapes. It is recording what happens to the sound in the environment during an eclipse um, because insects and wildlife uh, may, in the path of totality, start to act like it's time to go to bed or time to wake up if they're nocturnal. And so Eclipse Soundscapes helps record that. That is so cool. Now, as you had mentioned earlier, a total solar eclipse is the only time we can actually see the outer atmosphere of the sun with our own eyes. Uh, what else are scientists going to be looking for during the eclipse? Because you mentioned some of the noises, sights and sounds. What else? So our scientists are going to be doing a lot of different experiments. We have research jets that are going to fly uh, the path of totality starting in Mexico to get the most out of the totality. Uh, they're going to have instruments to study the corona, that outer atmosphere of the sun, because the corona will help us understand more about the sun, but also more about space weather. And space weather, of course, affects um, our satellites and it can affect Earth as well. We'll also be uh, launching sounding rockets from Wallops, Virginia, 
three of those rockets, one just before the eclipse, one during, and one after. Those tell us about the atmosphere and what changes are happening as the energy from the sun is all of a sudden taken away during an eclipse. And also, there are students around the country seven, who are going to launch 750 balloons to um, weather balloons to uh, measure the changes in the atmosphere during the eclipse. So lots of opportunity for some great science. Anita, thank you so much for taking the time. This was super fun and very informative. I feel smarter already. <laughs> thank you so much for having me.